Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a perfume video which I'm actually so so excited about because I haven't done a dedicated perfume video in a really long time. I've only done one or two since like spring and if you guys watch my channel you know the whole story with that how I kind of went a little overboard when it came to perfume collecting. I needed to call it down. I needed to get to a healthy space again with my perfume collection and I just felt like talking about perfume, you know, because I still really love perfumes. It's something that I think I will always love sharing with you guys. And I've had a few people write me over on Instagram and ask me to please not completely stop reviewing perfumes or talking about perfumes because they really enjoyed my perfume content. And yeah, so I'm feeling really good about my collection right now, you guys. As you guys may or may not know, I decluttered my collection and got down to about 10 perfumes. Currently, I only actually have nine and I'm super happy with my collection. This doesn't mean that I will never shop for a perfume again. It doesn't mean that I will never bring a perfume or two back into my collection. Absolutely not. It just means that I wanted to get it under control. I'm finally feeling in a really healthy space and I'm loving my perfumes and using all my perfumes. Um, so without too much further ado, you guys, let's get started. And this is just going to be like a quick update. Which ones are my most worn? Which ones have I been gravitating toward the most? What are my most complimented? Which perfumes have I not been gravitating toward? Just like a chill drink coffee with me and talk about perfume video because I love these videos. I mean, I do. You guys, I love perfumes. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't have talked about them for like two years straight on my channel. So Anyway, I'm feeling really good today, you guys. Let's just get on into it. And um, also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. All right, guys, so we're here in my closet because this is where I keep my perfumes. And I'm just having some coffee here in this super cute mug, which I will link below for you. Every single time I feature this mug in a photo or in a video, I get questions about where it's from. And they have this mug in beige, black, and speckled and I think white too yeah I think yeah they do have white um, and I have it in every color except black um, but I, I might even get the black one I don't know I'm thinking about it but I really really love these mugs they're just so aesthetically pleasing and so cute and yeah, so I'm just working on some coffee today. I have almost a whole day off of work today. And today I wanted to share with you guys, um, just go through my perfumes. You know, perfume is something that even though I'm not necessarily collecting, like actively collecting, and I'm no longer actively working with any companies at the moment, any perfume companies, I feel really good and really free about my collection. Um, I feel really happy about my collection. I'm starting to get sort of that little spark back where... I used to be super, super in love with perfumes and excited about perfumes. I used to enjoy coming up and smelling them all the time, and they used to make me so happy. And if you guys watch my channel, you know that I went through this whole, like, kind of experience where I kind of went overboard with collecting perfumes. It became too much and just a whole bunch of things I'm not going to get into in today's video, but... Perfume for me at some point became a little bit almost like a toxic thing that was no longer bringing me joy. If anything, it was just causing me more stress than anything. And I had to minimize and get down to a small number in order to find that like joy again, if that makes sense. And so like I've told you guys before, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that I'm not I'm never going to perfume shop again. It doesn't mean that I'm never going to bring one into my collection again. Um, I actually would really love to find a Lalabo for myself and I know that right now they have their city exclusives in store and I am debating between a couple Le Labo perfumes. I would really love to have a Le Labo in my collection. Currently I only have nine perfumes you guys so I actually even have fewer than 10 at the moment and like I say it's not that I am over perfumes or that I no longer love them or no longer want to talk about them or no longer want to review them. I, I still do. I love them. Um, there's still definitely a part of me that there, there's something I absolutely adore. I adore fragrance. I always will. I just needed to kind of take a step back mentally for myself, I think. But now that I've gotten to this space where I have nine perfumes, I've actually been giving a lot of attention to my perfumes. I kind of know what I'm gravitating toward. And um, now that I'm here, I feel like I'm getting into a healthy space again where I can start looking at perfume as this beautiful, wonderful thing again that used to bring me so much happiness. And going forward, you guys, I really intend to keep it that way. Like, yeah, um, I just, I love, you know, I love my fragrances. I really do. So today I wanted to do a video. I've been getting a lot of people requesting, um, telling me over on Instagram that they love the direction that my channel is going in and they love that I've minimized and everything, but they said, please don't stop altogether talking about perfume. Like, 
and I won't. I, I love perfume. So I will interject perfume content here and there on this channel. So it's not like I'm never going to talk about it again. And today is one of those days where I wanted to go through and tell you guys kind of my most complimented, my most worn, um, least worn, just kind of like a little update as to how I'm feeling about my small collections. That's what we're going to be doing today. Why don't we do my least worn, which is kind of surprising. And I'll save the most worn and the most complimented to the end of the video. So surprisingly, you guys, one of my least worn is actually, oh, before I get started, I want to show you this super cute little tray. I think I got this from Amazon. I'm pretty sure it's this really beautiful, um, speckled, speckled ceramic dish. It is so cute. I'm really into the, um, beige ceramic, modern contemporary kind of minimalist aesthetic at the moment. I'm obsessed with this kind of like modern, like little, um, ceramic tray decor and stuff like that. I have a whole bunch of um, decor coming actually because I will be moving into a different place in the next year as I keep telling you guys and I'm gonna have to decorate it and I have some themes and some ideas. So if you want I can do an H&M home decor haul if you like. Um, so the perfume that I have surprisingly been wearing the least out of my collection at the moment is Gabrielle Essence, which is really weird because I love this perfume and I got this perfume last summer and that huge dent that you see there all happened last summer. I pretty much put that dent in last summer. I think I've only worn this perfume um, like twice since this summer started, which is really crazy because I love it. It still is a favorite. Um, so this is uh, Gabrielle Essence and this perfume this is a beautiful, really classy floral fragrance. It has yellow florals, it has white florals in it, there's coconut, there's a little bit of vanilla, there's musk, I think there's patchouli. Um, there's some fruity accords in here as well. It's just a really classy, elegant, vibrant, beautiful fragrance. And this one smells a little bit more young and a little bit more fresh. Yeah, a little younger and a little fresher and more vibrant, kind of more that shampooy fresh scent compared to the original Gabrielle, which by the way, I also really like the original Gabrielle. Um, not one that I want in my collection um, anytime soon. This is my preference, um, but I absolutely love this one. But yeah, surprisingly, I just haven't been reaching for it. I don't know. I've been reaching more for my vanillas. I don't know. This summer, I've gone definitely more in the vanilla direction. Um, I do kind of have my eyes peeled for a fresh classy fragrance i definitely would like to add like i told you guys i still don't have that like fresh shampooy scent i kind of brought back um chance au tendre briefly from my declutter bin but i did end up selling it you guys i did end up finding it at home because um i still just don't gravitate toward that one that much it's really nice but i just don't gravitate toward that one that much so um Interestingly enough, I have not worn Gabrielle Essence a lot. Another one I haven't worn a lot, not because I don't love it, but because it's not really the type of perfume I like to wear around the home a lot. I like to wear this one more when I go out or if I go on vacation, it is kind of my vacation scent. And I do go away a couple times a year, two or three times a year, um, just to like get out. And that is my Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. So this bottle is really exorbitant and crazy. I'm actually going to go ahead and take the cap off so I can smell it and because it's very heavy. So this is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. You guys can see the dent that is missing there. This bottle is missing probably about, I would say, 20%. And I love this fragrance so much. This is this is a vanilla cardamom iris fragrance. So it's powdery, it's a little bit spicy, it's soft, it's woody, it's vanillic. It has this coldness to it. I always tell you guys it smells like it has this cold, oh, it's just, it's so nice. It has like this cold sexiness to it. I absolutely love it. And this one, I always refill my Travelos when I travel and I bring it with me on vacation. I actually need to find my Travelos. I'm not sure where they are. I hope I, I hope I still have them in the closet in the office. But anyways, I love this scent. It is my most expensive scent in my collection. It was well worth the money. Um, it is one that I will, I think I will always have in my collection. I think I'll keep repurchasing it when I run out. Although it's going to take me a long time to run out, which is partly why I minimized my collection, partly why I called it down because I just was not going through my perfumes enough, you guys. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Part of me misses having a huge collection, but I have been so much more fulfilled since I minimized. Like I feel just the sense of like clarity and happiness and I'm actually using what I have. 
I think that I, going forward, I never want to own more than about like maybe 20 perfumes max ever. I think that that is the point at which if I have more than 20, like 15 or 20, that's the point at which I don't put dents in them. This nine perfume thing has been working really well for me. I've actually been getting a lot of use out of my fragrances. Um, so yeah, that is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. And again, just not one of my most worn recently, but I love it and um, just smells really rich and sophisticated. Okay, my third least worn, working towards my most worn. Okay, recently, okay, I would say probably Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb is a beautiful, sweet floral fragrance. It's got tea, it's got orchid, it's got a few other floral notes in it. I think there's osmanthus in here as well, which gives a little bit of a fruitiness. And this is just a very sweet, feminine, girly perfume. I absolutely love it. Um, I just haven't been wearing it as much lately, I think because I've been gravitating more toward my other fragrances. But this is a perfume that remains for me an easy reach, um, kind of a lifer perfume. I've been wearing this perfume now for about eight years. <laughs> when I started my channel, I had already been wearing it for like five or six years, and now I've been wearing it for eight years. Um, and this is my second bottle, my second bottle. So as you can see, I haven't gone through a ton of it because over the last two years, three years, I was getting so much sent to me in PR and I was buying so many perfumes and I just didn't even wear it, and which is a shame because it's one of my favorite. Um, but this one, always reminds me of back in the day when I was dating my partner. This was my signature scent and I just have so many really nice memories attached to it. And it's just a really feminine, pretty fragrance. And I think it's versatile too. It goes with any occasion. You can wear it for date night. You can wear it to the office. It could be a signature scent. Really love it. All right. My next least worn, I guess now we're getting into the most worn because it's only half and half. So getting into probably my most worn of the last few months. I would say the one on the bottom of the list, but still one that I've worn a lot, is Black Opium Le Parfum. So Black Opium Le Parfum is the latest Black Opium flanker to come out. I'm sure there will be another one right around the corner because we're getting into fall, winter, so maybe they'll come up with another one. Um, but this is the Le Parfum version. So this is essentially your pear jasmine coffee scent, very traditional pear jasmine coffee vanilla. Smells basically like the other um, black opium perfumes, but the difference is this one has a lot more vanilla and it also has solar notes. And the solar notes, the solar notes give it this kind of creamy, um, creamy, almost beachy accord. Not that it smells like a beach, but it smells kind of like a warm hug, a warm hug on a sunny day and almonds is like how I feel solar notes smell like. That's my interpretation of them, whether or not that's what they're intended to smell like, I don't know. But for me, it smells like a warm hug on a sunny day and almonds. <laughs> um, and also just a ton of vanilla. Like this Lay Parfum version has so much vanilla in it. It's just a really, really easy reach. It's enjoyable, I enjoy it. It's easy to reach for. I've gotten compliments on this perfume. Um, yeah, it just smells amazing, has good longevity, and I'm obsessed. This is one that I could have a, a 100 ml bottle. This is a 50. Honestly, I will repurchase it um, when I run out. Unless they come up with another black opium that's even better. But so far, this is my favorite black opium of all the black opiums that, that they've released. And um, I've been wearing it quite a bit. So it's kind of a shame. You can't really see where the dent is. I don't know if you can see a dent. I don't think so. I think it's completely opaque, but if you could see a dent, I would guess that I'm probably about like, probably about right there somewhere. Like, I think I've probably used a good 25% of this bottle because I've worn it a lot and I've sprayed it a lot when I've worn it. So I really, really enjoy that one. Okay. Um, the next one that I have been wearing more is Killian. I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess or just princess. Um, so first of all, I want to say I'm really happy they changed the packaging of this bottle. It used to be in that little round bottle with the square base that looked kind of like a pool, pool ball. And I was not a fan. I didn't think that that packaging was very nice. I much prefer this sort of like rectangular flask style. And this fragrance is a soft green tea marshmallow scent. So it's kind of vanillic. It's fluffy. Oh, it smells so, so good. It's vanillic. It's fluffy. It's green. It's a little bit herbal. It smells like tea. It smells like a matcha latte, but at the same time, it's 
marshmallows and fluffiness and it's just beautiful. Really good longevity and I love catching wafts of this coming off of my clothing. It's really cozy, perfect for fall winter. Um, this I think is going to be one of my most worn in the fall winter. I'm so excited to dig it out when the weather gets a little bit colder. It's just so pretty. So I've been wearing this a lot. Another thing that I've been doing, just as a side note, you guys, I've actually been making more of an effort to wear my perfume every day since I minimized a little bit because I think before I just had so many perfumes that I was overwhelmed and I didn't know what to wear. So as a result, I would just walk away. Like instead of picking something, I would become so overwhelmed and not know what to wear that I would just walk away. And that is what happens when you have decision fatigue. When you have just too many things to pick from, it becomes overwhelming. I just have a lot more clarity with this, with this smaller collection. It's just been easier for me to actually choose a scent now that I have fewer scents. It's like some sort of weird psychology there. Okay, and then we have my three most worn lately. And at the bottom of that list, but still one I've been wearing a little bit more, is Armani Privé Santal Doncha. So you can see that there's a little bit of a dent missing in this bottle. Not a huge dent, um, but I have been wearing this a little bit more frequently. You don't need a lot of this perfume. A little bit goes a long way and it does have good longevity. And I also like to layer this perfume with other perfumes. So that's why I think the dent is not huge. This is a beautiful, um, kind of a fresher, more summery take on a sandalwood. I'm not going to lie, you guys, I would be interested in trying Santel 33 again, just because I've become more interested in, I've been getting more into those sophisticated fragrances and um, I really like sandalwood. I've started to really like sandalwood and this perfume has been the first sandalwood dominant scent in my collection that's actually worked for me and that I really, really enjoy. Um, so because of that, part of me thinks maybe I should revisit Santel 33. Like I said, I would love a Le Labo in my collection. Um, I'll just tell you guys right now, the Le Labos that I'm considering are Gayak 10, Vini 44, and Tonka 25. And Gayak and Vini, I have not smelled. Um, Tonka, I have smelled and I really liked it, but I don't live anywhere near a Le Labo boutique, so I have to wait till I go back to revisit them again. I'm not going to blind buy a Le Labo. That is just, I'm not, that's something I'm not doing anymore. I'm not going to blind buy <laughs> a Le Labo just to have a Le Labo. I want to make sure that if I get it, it's like the right one. It's going to suit me and all that stuff. Um, but anyways, getting back to Saint Haldanshaw. So this has bergamot in it. It has cardamom. I think there's maybe petty grain or something. There's a few kind of woody herbal and greenish notes. And that bergamot edition that's in here gives it this beautiful freshness. Um, this perfume, you guys, is probably one of the classiest perfumes in my entire collection if not the classiest, like it is so beautiful. And I know a lot of people when they, when they smell sandalwood, they say all they smell is dill pickle. I totally understand it. Like I get it. I get why people smell pickle, but for me, I don't smell dill pickle when I smell sandalwood. Like that's not where my mind goes. For me, I just smell just this beautiful, classy, like soft, woody scent. And it just is so pretty. Like I said, this is probably one of the most sophisticated, classy perfumes in my entire collection. If I want to feel super posh and bougie, this is the one that I've been reaching for. It just is that perfume. And I'm obsessed. And I think that the addition of the cardamom or the bergamot in here rather gives it this freshness. It's not as deep and creamy and rich as Santal 33 from what I remember. Still sandalwood dominant though. So if you're not a sandalwood fan, then maybe steer clear, but I love it. And this is on Sephora. I know a lot of people said it was sold out, but I saw it on Sephora. So I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's available. I think it kind of took off. I think people, and I hope that they didn't discontinue it because I've kind of heard rumors about that too. Okay, and then coming down to my most worn perfumes, and this is where you really start to hone in on like what your favorites are, right? So nine times out of 10, you guys, when I reach for a perfume, Okay, I would say my second most worn is Mon Guerlain. And this perfume, you guys, is the number one most complimented scent in my entire collection. Out of all the perfumes in my collection, Mon Guerlain is the number one most complimented. This, I don't think I need to tell you what it smells like. It's available to go, to go smell wherever you go, but it's lavender, vanilla, licorice. Here, there's some floral notes. There's a little bit of sandalwood in here as well. And this is just a beautiful really feminine, cozy, comforting vanilla lavender scent. 
as you can see, the dent is growing and I do have a backup of this one. I have a hundred mil backup. Sometimes I think I should sell it, but I'm not going to because I will go through this and I will want that bottle. But sometimes I wonder, do I really need backups? But yeah, now that I'm finally making dents in my perfumes, you guys, I do need, like, I'm going to keep those backups of my favorites. And this one I'm going to go through in no time. Oh, it's so pretty. It is so pretty. It's so feminine. It's soft. It's soothing. It's relaxing. It's comforting. Um, I actually wear this to work sometimes. Technically, we're not really supposed to wear perfume to work, but my opinion is there's a lot of stinky things at work and some people come to work smelling like cigarette smoke, literally. If they can come in smelling like toxins and chemicals and cigarettes, I can come in smelling like lavender and vanilla. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, and I don't wear very much of this when I go to work. I don't spray very much. I keep it very subtle. I don't think it like hurts anybody. I have never had anybody tell me, oh, your fragrance is giving me a headache. Or, like I've never had a problem. If anything, I get compliments, you guys, like so many compliments. I've actually had patients, family members, stop me and ask me to write down what perfume I was wearing. The, the only time I've ever had anybody ask me to write down what perfume I was wearing so that they could go tell their wives or their whoever it was, was Mon Guerlain. I get, yeah, I get compliments like crazy when I wear this one, you guys. Everybody loves it. Um, and they just tell me that it smells nice, like just so nice. That's, that's the best way that they put it. Um, so yeah, it's just an amazing fragrance. It's just beautiful. It's soft. It's cozy. It's familiar. It's feminine. I just, yeah. Mon Guerlain, I told you guys, I told you guys a while back that if I could only keep one designer scent for the rest of my life, it would be Mon Guerlain. And it, that still stands true to this day. So I've been wearing that one a little bit more often. And then probably my most gravitated toward though, you guys, the easiest reach, the one that is always super enjoyable and I just keep reaching for it is my Kiali Vanilla 28. So you guys can see, okay, the dent speaks for itself. Like my dents are getting big since I decluttered and I'm really happy about that. And so yeah, I absolutely love this one, you guys. This is a really old bottle. You can tell because the juice has gotten very dark. At this point, it's very dark and very ambery. It has almost a boozy smell to it now. The older it gets, the more it smells boozy. The fresher the bottle, the more of that orchid and those floral notes that you get. But the older it gets, the more it smells more like, um, kind of like a kind of like a burnt brown sugar, almost like an ambery brown sugar. And this is just such a gorgeous scent and so easy to wear. And this is probably going to be the first bottle that I actually empty. Like I have been looking at perfumes, collecting perfumes, whatever for three years, you guys, and I have not emptied a bottle. This will be the first one that I empty, I think, based on the rate that I'm going. Um, and so it comes in this beautiful, beautiful bottle that looks like a little diamond and yeah, it smells quite boozy. It smells kind of alcoholy to the cap because it's got that, it's kind of got that old like juice on the cap there. And this one just, I don't know, it's enjoyable. It's sweet. It's feminine. Again, it's a compliment getter. I do get compliments on this scent. Actually, one night I was wearing, um, I was wearing the Kaoli and the Mongerlan layered together. That's a really nice combination, by the way. And, um, I got compliments that night as well, wearing those two together. And yeah, I just love it. I There's not much else to say about it than that. It's just a beautiful, easy to wear, feminine vanilla scent and I love it. So yeah, this is my most used, this is my biggest dent and it's my most used perfume, but not my biggest compliment getter. Big, biggest compliment getter still goes to Mon Guerlain. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up my perfume collection, you guys. It's pretty small and that's just my updates on, oh no, no, I missed one. Oh my gosh, I totally missed one. This is another one I have been wearing, but not as much as the Kaoli, not as much as the Kaoli, but I've actually been wearing this one um, more than the Mon Guerlain lately. Armani Code Satin. I almost forgot to talk about Armani Code Satin. Um, so this one here is discontinued, you guys. It's a real shame that they discontinued this because it's a beautiful one and a lot of people like it. And this is very similar to the original code, but it has the addition of praline in here. And I think there might even be leather or something. I can't remember if they put leather in here or what they put. But this one is, this is a super sultry, intoxicating, addictive, sweet vanilla fragrance with like some orange blossom neroli kind of vibes in there as well. So it kind of is like shampooy and floral, but also super deep and just intoxicating and addictive and sexy. I would say this is my sexiest perfume in my collection. 
Um, this is my current kind of date night go-to. If I was to go out for a date or something, I would either pick this one or I would pick Flower Bomb. Those are my two kind of sexiest perfumes, I would say, or like my date night sultry perfumes is how I would describe that one. This one is actually the highest complimented from my partner. When my boyfriend compliments me and tells me I smell really good, this is the perfume he's complimented me on the most. And he doesn't compliment much. Like if he smells something and it's just okay, he doesn't really say anything. But if he really likes it, he'll say something. And this one he really, really loves. Um, so I think it makes it a good choice for a day night. But yeah, I've been wearing this one a little bit more often. Back when I had tons of perfumes and this whole shelf was full of perfumes, you guys, I was not, like I said, I wasn't reaching for a lot of them because I would just get overwhelmed. I would get confused. I didn't really know what to wear. It was too hard to choose anything. And as a result, they all kind of sat here and did not get dense and they were all going to eventually just go bad, which was super wasteful and did not make me happy. Um, now that I've called down a little bit, like I say, I've been reaching for all of them a little bit more. And this one I've started wearing just in the daytime, just like normal day to day. If I feel like smelling good, I put it on. I know that it smells good. Can't go wrong. It smells amazing. I actually have a backup of it because that's how much I love it. And like I said, I'm really, really sad that they, that they discontinued that one because I know a lot of other people love it too. And my old mantra was I wasn't going to keep any perfumes that were discontinued. However, I have realized, you guys, that obviously it takes a long time to go through bottles. Like sometimes it will take me a year, two years, three years to go through a bottle. So even if it's discontinued, that's still like three years worth of perfume. You know what I mean? So um, going forward, I'm going to try not to let that be a deciding factor about whether or not I keep something because like I say, I've heard rumors through the mill that Don Shaw was discontinued. I hope it isn't, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to get rid of it. And like I told you guys, I also really, really, really regret, like if there is one perfume, you guys, that I regret letting go of, it is Louis Vuitton Contremois. That fragrance was in a league all on its own. It was such a gorgeous uh, herbal vanilla fragrance with like some chocolate accords in it. It literally smelled like the inside of an old suitcase, but in the best way possible and a whole bunch of vanilla and like some chocolatey touches. It just was classy, 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 classy. And I loved that fragrance. And the only reason I sold it is because I was decluttering because again, I had way too many perfumes. I was overwhelmed and it was discontinued. So I thought, well, why am I going to hold on to something that's discontinued? Like if I can't get it again, what's the point? I don't want to fall in love with it. I don't want it to become like a holy grail and I can't get it again. So I decluttered it. And honestly, looking back, that was so dumb because I would still have most of that bottle left. I would probably still have most of the bottle. So if any of you has a bottle or know somebody who doesn't like it and they have a bottle and they want to sell it, please let me know. I found a bottle on eBay, but it was half full and it was like $400. And I was like, mm, no, <laughs> I'd rather just save my coin and put it towards something else in the future. So, so yeah, you guys, I, I really am loving my collection. Sorry. I just had to grab my coffee here. Um, it's almost time to make another coffee, but I'm getting to a really healthy point with my perfumes. Now you guys where I no longer am stressed about it. You know, um, it's no longer overwhelming me. I don't feel I don't, I don't have any negative feelings toward the whole perfume thing anymore for a while there. Like I say, it was getting to be too much. It was getting to be like, I don't, I don't really know how to put it into words, but if you guys have ever struggled with like overwhelm with anything, you probably know. And yeah, but I'm getting to a point, like I say now where, um, things are, it's feeling good again and perfume makes me feel good again. And the prospect of smelling something new makes me feel good again. And it doesn't mean I'm going to start collecting. It doesn't mean that I'm going to let my, I've learned my lesson. Like I'm not going to let my perfume collection grow out of control. Um, I'm sure there's going to be the odd person in the comments who's going to say something rude. Like, oh, I knew it was only a matter of time before you started buying. Like, yeah, okay. Drop it down below. Drop it down below, girl. Um, all kidding aside, you guys, like I'm finally getting to a point where I'm so happy about what I have. I'm happy about what I have. And um, I'm kind of inspired now again to discover, you know, if there is a Lalabo that is perfect for me, something like that, where I can bring it in and 
Also, I'm just super happy that I'm actually wearing everything I have. Like I'm super happy that everything is actually getting worn. Yeah, just in general, I feel good about it. So that's about it, you guys. Um, That's my thoughts, my perfume thoughts for today. Like I said, I've had some people write me on Instagram and ask me to please don't totally stop doing perfume content altogether because they really liked my perfume videos. And to be honest, you guys, I love perfume still. I love, you know, I still love them. I just needed to take a break. I needed to take a break for myself, for my mental health, for my my sanity <laughs> and it feels it feels good to be back in this like healthy mental space again so that is about it you guys thank you for watching i hope that you enjoyed my video and i would be curious to know down below what are some of your most worn perfumes lately also feel free to follow me on instagram i'm going to be posting a lot more content over there and um if you want to see more like aesthetic like contemporary beige aesthetic neutral vibe h&m decor type stuff I'm going to be posting a lot of that over there as well and um, of course I'll share with you anything else that that I feel like sharing so thank you guys for watching and have a nice day